Chapter 1. Wonderful. In olden times, all names meant something, and this is still the case among Indians and all other people who are living in a primitive way. Whenever you know an Indian's name and the meaning of it, you know something about the Indian. Such names as Kill Deer, Eagle Eye, Buffalo Face, and Sitting Bull tell us something about the men who possessed them. This tendency to use names that are expressive still crops out in camp life and whenever men are thrown together in an unconventional way. In mining, military, and lumber camps, nearly every man has a nickname that indicates some peculiarity or trait of character. Usually a man's nickname is nearer the real man than his right name. All of our family names today had their origin in something that meant something. All Bible names have a meaning, and when you read the scriptures, it will always help you to a better understanding of their meaning to look up the proper definition of all proper names. There are 256 names given in the Bible for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I suppose this was because he was infinitely beyond all that any one name could express. Of the many names given to Christ, it is my purpose at this time to briefly consider this one. His name shall be called Wonderful. Let us look into it somewhat and see whether he was true to the name given him in a prophecy 800 years before he was born. Does the name fit him? Is it such a name as he ought to have? Wonderful means something that is transcendently beyond the common something that is away beyond the ordinary. It means something that is altogether unlike anything else. We say that Yellowstone Park, Niagara Falls, and the Grand Canyon of Colorado are wonderful because there is nothing else like them. When David killed Goliath with a sling, he did a wonderful thing because nobody else ever did anything like it. It was wonderful that the Red Sea should open to make a highway for Israel, and wonderful that the sun should stand still for Joshua. Let us see whether Jesus was true to his name. His birth was wonderful, for no other ever occurred that was like it. It was wonderful in that he had but one human parent, and so inherited the nature of man and the nature of God. He came to be the Prince of Princes and the king of kings, and yet his birth was not looked forward to in glad expectation as the birth of a prince usually is in the royal palace, and celebrated with marked expressions of joy all over the country, as has repeatedly happened within the recollection of many who are here. There was no room for him at the inn, and he had to be born in a stable and cradled in a manger, and yet angels proclaimed his birth with joy from the sky, to a few humble shepherds in sheepskin coats who were watching their flocks by night. Mark how he might have come with all the pomp and glory of the upper world. It would have been a great condescension for him to have been born in a palace, rocked in a golden cradle and fed with golden spoons, and to have had the angels come down and be his nurses. But he gave up all the glory of that world and was born of a poor woman, and his cradle was a manger. Think what he had come for. He had come to bless and not to curse, to lift up and not to cast down. He had come to seek and to save that which was lost, to give sight to the blind, to open prison doors and set captives free to reveal the Father's love, to give rest to the weary, to be a blessing to the whole world, and yet there was no room for him. He came to do that, and yet many of you have no room for him in your hearts. His birth was also wonderful in this, that the wise men of the East were guided from far across the desert to his birthplace by a star. Nothing like this ever announced the coming of anyone else into this world. As soon as his birth was known, the king of the country sought his life and ordered the slaughter of the innocents at Bethlehem. The babies were the first Christian martyrs, 